Yo, 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 what is going on, IK Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today we are back again giving you some more of this good, good in the hood, if you know what I mean, content and quality information. So today we're going to be touching on something interesting. It's going to be a little bit more kind of a bigger topic, if you will. And before we get started, as always, man, make sure you guys sub, like, ring the notification bell, and of course, if you want to be a part of our conversation, hit up our Discord, which you can find in the pinned comment and description down below. So today, I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of where the state of the game is, along with just general thoughts, and I think what my recommended tips would be as of now, right, with the level increases. Because part of me really feels like we are slowly turning IK into World of Warcraft, right, where you <clears throat> might find yourself in a better position, right, focusing solely on just the max level grind and then being able to kind of do everything right like if you play wow so, you know the one of the things you often hear from people if you're just getting into it right is that you kind of have to get to max level first before you can really start enjoying other things in the game and based on where we're at now in ik right with the plus 10 level increase from one point from the 1.8 update along with 10 more level increases that we're eventually going to get once we get later down the season lines into conquest for, um, for the server age or server season age where you're going to have 10 more levels, right? So we're eventually going to be at a point where we're at level 60 and other areas are being impacted because of that. The, the challenge is, is that by increasing the levels, right, you almost are an insured for the majority of the player base, right? Like the non-heavy, mid to heavy high spenders, you're pretty much turning the game into you know, Farmville, really for the most part, at least until people start getting to those max levels. You see, one of the most enjoyable parts about Kingdom Builders is being able to kind of participate and compete in your KVKs, right, your SVSs. This is literally, by far, the number one most important game mode and feature in Kingdom Builders, right? Now, IB, kind of the Alliance versus Alliance events, the tournaments that may eventually happen, those are extremely fun as well and definitely needed but we've talked about this before right remember you can only have a limited amount of people playing right in this case for ik you can only have 40 right plus your subs but in kvk and svs you can have every single player in your kingdom participating and engaging in kvk and that's what makes it so appealing right it's one of the reasons why this genre is so amazing because if you really get it right you could have a home run and you will have people flock like that's the it's it's such a wild thing because in the kingdom builder genre there are always people that are on the lookout for new games right and i think when we look at ik you know when people start, first started playing it myself included you know you had this really they were like the free to play hero in the genre right they were the one game that was just doing it so well on appealing to the free-to-play player base, player base, right? This is like pre pre 1.8 update, and because of that, you had so many people that were flocking. People came from Rock, they came from SOS, they came from Lords Mobile, they came from even people who were coming from Clash of Clans, right? They never played Kingdom Builders before, and there was a level of extreme enjoyment that people were getting, right? Um, a few a few friends that I ended up making. Um, right, thus I'll just say for my time thus far in IK, right, um, and shout outs to Clash Bashing, uh, Clash with Eric, uh, right, Echo Gaming, uh, right, the uh, Omniarch, right, these are just some Wick Gaming as of uh, late, right, these are some people that I actually have conversations with, right, on kind of a semi regular basis. And these were people that, uh, again, about half of them never really played a Kingdom Builder before, and IK was kind of their first introduction. And what an introduction to get into, <clears throat> right, for a game like this compared to something else that really isn't as free-to-play friendly. And <clears throat> so we kind of get to this point where, you know, we're looking at, excuse me, where we're looking at where, where is the enjoyment coming in now? Right. How are we going to be able as players to really maximize our enjoyment after these level increases are coming? And, you know, my thoughts on where it is now is that part of me feels like, you know, what's the reason to participate in KVK, right? Why would someone um, engage in KVK, engage in SVS when 
they can just hang out in their home kingdom and like just max level or better yet right participate in kvk up until the point where they would kind of be in danger of getting invaded but they can at least kind of milk those city resources that they can get back to back from the rewards right the interval rewards that you get every couple hours right because those are fantastic and great but outside of that Right, the moment you get invaded, then you may arguably make the decision, right, if your kingdom really isn't able to kind of stand or do anything, right, where you may just go back to Norheim. Why? Because you're going to be able to develop that much faster, that much more, to where you'll be better prepared for the next KVK compared to other kingdoms that are maybe sticking around and fighting, right, all the time. And sure, yes, you, know, you can make the argument that you'll be able to benefit from if you are able to win and you think you're able to get to have control to where maybe you're able to take a bunch of more cities and kind of just farm the city cycle rewards right that you're able to get from there you know maybe you're able to complete some of the alliance or the personal achievements and tasks rewards there as well right maybe you're able to get one of the other capitals outside of uh, ymir and you know okay sure right that that can be okay but in the long run you're not going to be able to progress as much as you would, right, at this 100% development rate, if you are constantly fighting and if you're in KVK right after a certain point, right, if the fight is breaking out, compared to if you're back in Norheim and you're just gathering at 100% rate, right, everything is going right into the next building upgrade and you're not losing any resources, right? And so it, it, it's interesting to me uh, because I have actually started seeing this conversation come up a little bit more. And what's funny is that this is something I actually preached for a little while, kind of in a, a short spurt in, uh, during my time in 79. And what's funny is that some of the people there just like completely just like bit into me on that. And what's funny is that you look at some of the conversations that are happening now after the 1.8 increase, right, where now it's like, oh, well, now it kind of makes a little more sense, right? Now there's, right, now you can make more of an argument, right, is kind of how some of it's being positioned. However, the same point then really kind of almost applies now, which is that, you know, a lot of it is about minimizing your your resource queues right how many outgoing queues do you have that you're spending resources on because the players who are going to be able to sustain more for longer periods of time in kvk are going to be are going to be the ones who have less resources going out and more they're able to save and this kind of comes in when you look at you know like let's say you have three building queues going plus your research queue that's four plus your training and your healing that's six but let's say you're able to get all your buildings to max level well now all you have is research training and healing right so you basically cut your resource your your resource output in half meaning you're going to be able to have now more resources left over in your storage to use on training and healing to actually sustain longer in battles in kvk right so this is something to kind of take into consideration when we look at right do we do we really want to stay in kvk just no matter what fight all the time and again kind of take that pro and con there right or do we maybe stay there long enough until we potentially see if we're not able to really gather and kind of sustain the whole cities as long and then we kind of go back to norheim do we just go back the moment that the gates fall down because we just know we're going to get invaded anyways right so i kind of put off the inevitable and then we can still benefit from some of the increased gathering speeds back in norheim it really just kind of puts things into perspective on you know what is important based on where the game is going right because we're eventually going to get to castle 60 and you're going to have players that will probably start asking these questions more right is it worth staying is it worth leaving do we compete do we not right i mean we've even been hearing rumblings of servers having challenges capturing contention of relics right and being able to not only hit 300k right but even some hitting 200k right some even just having troubles capturing world heart right in order to be king and so you know these are things that are happening you know because of these increases and you know it is it's challenging right because as much as i still love playing infinity kingdom you know a lot of a lot of what has come from 1.8 has made it very discouraging it's made it very troublesome right very cautious on 
you know, where is the game going now? What's the direction? You know, is, you know, does it, because at face value, if I was just a, an average player, I would think to myself, you know, why are we doing level increases so soon? You know, is the company trying to milk players? Are they just trying to get as much money out of it so then they can dip? Like, you know, again, when you look at it objectively, right, there, there's no precedent on anything that Yuzu has done thus far that would make you think, hey, they're going to hit us with 10 level cap increases, right? They never announced that before. There was no hints at it. They never sent, like, a good example is, you know, they've done their IK Studio in-game announcements, right? And they came out and they told people that we were eventually going to see KVK. We were eventually going to see Illusion Battlefield, right? Then months later it happened. You know, they never said anything. In, in that level of, of time advance that, hey, guys, we're thinking about increasing the levels five to ten, you know, within the next month or next few months. Or, hey, we're going to go to Castle 50, then we're eventually going to go to Castle 60. Give us some feedback. Let us know what you guys think about this, right? I mean, nothing. So it's interesting when, when you know the history of a game you've been playing for, you know, IK, you know, since the early stages, right? For anyone that I would say if you played in beta, you know, possibly by kind of S8 or before, you know, for me, I started and I started a little after S4 went on. So I was a little past halfway into the beta, if you just kind of factor into when global release um, came from then when Server 1 was released. And, you know, you, you can really pick apart and kind of notice these trends within the game. Like, what do they announce? What don't they announce? What do they include? What don't they include? Um, you know, and even if you look at the 1.8 patch notes, you know, you can see that, yeah, they did talk about saying that some of these levels were going to be increased for things like relics and world heart, but they never said the amount. They never gave us any details and said like, hey, this is what they are. This is what they're going to, right? And what we later found out, even just as another side thing, with COR, it almost seems like they're actually doing the three tier level cycle increase. So you may remember, <clears throat> or for those of you that are experiencing it now, when you start off in a new server, your first COR is at one wall durability and one garrison power. When COR2 comes around, then that wall durability, the garrison power, those things increase, the levels for relics and world heart. <clears throat> and then when COR3 comes around, right, that's when it increases to its next peak, and that's where it stops. But then once you get to Season 2 is when the levels increase again. And from what we've confirmed and found out, right, and I'll show you guys some levels here in another video uh, when I cover this, but we found out that there's going to most likely be three new cycles, right? So then you're going to kind of have like the COR4 level rate. Then you're going to have the COR5 and COR6, right? Eventually once your kingdom gets into Season 2. And what this means is that if this trend continues, you'll eventually have a arguable, right, Tier 7, Tier 8, and Tier 9, right, or COR789 once Conquest hits as well. So these are just things to think about when, you, again, we look at the history on, on how things have developed. And for me, that's really the question I want to pass off to you, the community, is... One, obviously, I, I think the, mo the majority of us at this point really believe that the level increases needed to wait before they came in. And I think one of the solutions to that is just increasing things like your gathering rate, uh, maybe adding a fifth march, uh, doing things like increasing the uh, daily tasks, the growth missions so we can level up lower level talents a little bit faster, um, doing things where we can try to increase the rate that we are leveling up cities. Um, and other areas to try and compensate for some of that. I think that would be some of the literally just bare minimum things that need to happen at this point, right, for the community to keep sustaining itself. But I would really love to know what you guys think so far. I would love to know what you guys think about Contention of Relics, for those of you who've been participating in it and how you feel overall. Do you think there's any merit to what I was saying on possibly focusing on more of that 100% development route on trying to get all your buildings to max level before you really start kind of going hard and uh, doing a lot of the PvP or even over-engaging in things like KVK? Do you see value there, yes or no? You know, would love to know why. And then I think lastly, you know, what are your thoughts on, you know, how the information has been disseminated, right? Because I know there's moments, like we talked about instances where we've seen things announced early on and they came out months later. And then sometimes we kind of get these shadow, right? These kind of quick updates or quick hot fixes. And there's just unfortunately nothing that's really announced from the IK team. And I think those are things we'd love to hear, right? And I think any player would in the community. 
With that being said, though, again, these are just kind of my general thoughts on, on how I'm feeling right now. And, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, there there is still some optimism, but at the same time, there are realistic expectations. And, and I think, you know, kind of um, levels of caution that, you know, many of us, it feels like, are at now. And I think right, rightfully so. Um, you know, we definitely would love some answers and would love to hear from the IK team on how some of these things, you know, are playing out. What are they seeing? You know, are there going to be any changes or adjustments that are made? Um, and I, I don't think it's too unfair to ask for that, to be honest. But again, would love to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments down below. That is it for me. Until next time, we will catch you all later.